The most terrible financial deception of our generation. What if we're being tricked? Many of us would want to think that our governments are looking out for our best interests at all times. We depend on our governments to provide education, roads, public transportation, public safety, military services, and many of our elements that enable our society to operate. Similarly, if a tragedy were to loom on the horizon that would harm the well-being of billions of people, you'd think they'd notify us so we could prepare for what's to come and take action to be ready for whatever is to come. But what if they did the opposite? What if they lied to us instead of telling us the truth? Trust your government. Do you have faith in your government? This elicited some responses from others. The answer was a resounding nay by an overwhelming margin. They didn't have confidence in their administration. As a result, fewer than one in every five persons said they had done so. Now, suppose you're one of the five people who believes this. In that case, odds are you'll be reconsidering your position by the conclusion of this video, primarily because we will be disclosing the financial falsehoods and manipulations that have been revealed to us to keep us in the dark about our economy. Manipulation has the potential to deceive billions of people into believing the illusion that things are okay when, in reality, they may not be. According to some estimates, stuff like these raises the possibility that we are on the approach of a massive economic collapse, the largest in a century. So buckle up because we're going on a wild journey and make sure you stay around until the finish because we'll share with you some tips on preparing for the adventure. So let's get down to business. The story behind it. A little bit of history. During the 1970s, most of the Western world was impacted hard by inflationary conditions. Several causes contributed to this, including an energy crisis, the dollar's detachment from the value of gold, and various other issues. The eventual effect was a significant increase in the value of money. Moreover, the cost of products and services increases for almost all consumers. Inflation reached its zenith in the United States in 1974 when it surpassed 11%. After the decade, the situation deteriorated even worse, with unemployment clo coming over closer to 14%. We'd want you to keep the figures we've just spoken about because they will be crucial in the coming days. This inflation resulted in significant levels of unemployment, a surge in bankruptcies, and a considerable increase in the cost of housing for the majority of the population amongst other consequences. A look at today's economy. And this brings us to the present day. Hint, someone you believe would be acquainted with Elon Musk. So Elon was recently asked on Twitter what he thought the future of startups in the United States would be. And his response was depressing. He predicted that just a tiny percent of American startups would make it through the next crisis. Moreover, according to Elon, the next major recession will strike the United States as early as this year, which means it will reach us just a few short months from now. Elon Musk is a person who makes rocket ships and he does want to implant computers in our heads to be sure we must not forget that one of the very first firms he started was paypal which is in the financial services industry we believe that he has a unique perspective on the financial industry and thus believes that he is more equipped to speak on this subject than 90 percent of the rest of us despite this he has gotten a lot of negative feedback concerning his forecast people believe that even though inflation is high it is nothing like the levels of the 1970s and that we need not be very concerned. One of the most blatant financial falsehoods. However, here is when the great financial deception comes into play. The great deception. A few months ago, they revealed that inflation in the United States had reached 6.2% with most of the Western world not far behind. The inflation rate is 6.2%, which may not seem like a significant figure, but it is the highest rate we have seen in 31 years. However, here is the catch. Inflation isn't precisely at 6.2% right now. In reality, it's far higher. Compared to the 1970s, it is 
far greater now. We are being kept in the dark about this crucial information by the individuals who are supposed to be looking out for and protecting us. The Consumer Price Index, sometimes known as the CPI, calculates inflation. It is based on the cost of goods and services in your immediate vicinity and it calculates your annual cost of living. They can determine inflation based on how much more costly interest your immediate area is getting. Consequently, if the cost of living increases by 2%, inflation is 2%. Isn't it a straightforward statement? Suppose, on the other hand, they sought to influence the inflation rates. This seems to be a possibility based on the current situation. At one point in time, the cost of constant basket of grocery products was used to measure inflation. However, this method has since been phased out. However, this is not the case at the moment. Today, the United States government can change that basket to influence the inflation statistics provided. Consider the following scenario. Steak price rises by 10% in a single year, for instance. Instead of accurately determining that steak has become more costly and including this into inflation estimates, they choose to do something completely different. They swap the steak with considerably less expensive hamburger meat, which they claim is almost identical but is not. In fact, the same product. They do this and various things to maintain inflation statistics as low as they possibly can. The act of manipulating real estate information. The extent to which this data manipulation has progressed is just mind-boggling. For example, let's take the real estate, which has significantly increased in value over a previous couple of years, and discuss it. If you look at genuine statistics and actually growth in home and rent prices, you would assume that the inflation rate in the housing market is based on that. In the past, that was true, but not anymore. The government uses a concept known as owner equivalent rent in place of including the rise in property prices. Essentially, this is a fancy way of stating that they ask a few homeowners what they believe they could rent their property for and then utilize that figure. They base their calculations on views rather than facts and hence they are not based on hard facts. As a result, according to research, the housing market in the United States has become around 15 to 16 percent more costly in recent years. They claim that it is just 3.9 percent according to the government. Practically, the same thing as having a bunch of scientists monitoring the speed at which light travels. The difference is that instead of basing their knowledge and figures on actual evidence, they will turn to random Bob and ask him how fast he believes light travels, and they will establish their expertise and numbers on his answer. Trying to figure out inflation the old way. Suppose we disregard this modification and stick to the old-fashioned method of computing interest instead. There have been several calls for countries, particularly the United States, to assess inflation constantly on the internet. As it stands currently, according to the most reliable data available, the rate of inflation is closer to 15% rather than the 6.2% that has been reported. This implies that we might be experiencing one of the most severe financial crises of our time, a collapse that would be so catastrophic that it would result in food shortages rising debt, and a slew of other consequences. However, not everyone believes that the situation is as difficult as it seems. Vox and other media sites would want you to think that things will be different this time. There is no possibility that what we are seeing today could be comparable to what occurred in the 1970s. Consequently, it seems like something is on the horizon and as a result, we want to be prepared now before sharing some instances of what we are doing to prepare. So, what can you do to get ready? Consequently, what are your options? To determine whether or not we are on the verge of experiencing a very severe downturn in the economy, if you want to be fully prepared, there are a few things you should think about. First, we must recognize that if you have a large amount of savings lying in your bank account, that money is losing value consistently as inflation rises. For example, if inflation is closer to 15%, it implies that in five years, half of your savings would have vanished. Even while the same amount of money will still be available. The same amount of money if only be able to purchase half as much in five years. 
Our opinion is that keeping a tiny amount of cash on hand for emergencies is a sensible decision. Nonetheless, if a severe recession were to strike, we wouldn't want too much of our money resting in a bank. As a general rule, there are two areas where we would recommend putting your funds, the first of which is gold and silver investments. Now, there are certain coin shops in almost every city globally where you can get started by investing in silver by roughly $23 per ounce, which is a reasonable starting point. For those who choose to keep an immense amount of their money in precious metals, vaults located all over the globe may be an option. In addition to traditional bank accounts, cryptocurrencies are a good option for storing your money since they earn a large, a greater interest rate than conventional bank accounts. You can generally earn interest on your cash deposits with BlockFi and you may make up to 9%. Finally, although this may sound a little extreme, many people are relocating out of cities and attempting to locate a piece of land where they can establish a community while also growing food. The largest cities will likely be the first to be affected by a possible recession. People who live in smaller, more self-sufficient communities where they can produce their food and look after one another would be better in a severe financial crisis than those who are reliant on having everything they need for life provided to them some last thoughts last but not least it's essential to be well prepared while also attempting to maintain as much financial security as possible in the event of a disaster however what it is not is a waiting game for governments to complete their duties if anything goes wrong they will be there to rescue you from yourself for the simple reason that as the video demonstrates they may not have our best interests at heart what are your thoughts on this i hope you liked and learned something from today's video if you want to keep improving and being inspired subscribe and press the bell button to be alerted whenever we upload a video this has been market profits institute